Hi, this is Taryn Lupo. Welcome to Low Country Liberty Report. You might say to yourself, why is he wearing that hat? Because it is a holiday hat. That's my last chance to wear it. And two, I'm wearing these hats to remind you to go to Liberty Forum and check it out. It's a www.freestateproject.org Liberty Forum in March. It's probably the best organized convention style forum around. I love it. Go check it out. Now, I'm going to do the top 10 best things that happened to Liberty in this decade. And I know you math nerds out there, it's not a real decade. I don't want to hear it. All right, here we go. Number 10 is the Harry Brown campaign. For you guys that don't know Harry Brown, before there was Ron Paul, there was a prominent libertarian named Harry Brown. Harry Brown was very principled and is much different than like the Libertarian Party these days. His message was consistent with liberty every single time. He did some pretty amazing stuff with the Libertarian Party considering that the internet was just in the beginning stages. There wasn't social networking like there is now. And he still managed to get a pretty large percentage, but he got a lot of recognition. And unfortunately he passed away. He still has a great website and you can read all of his writings. The next one is number nine, and that is the New Hampshire seatbelt law. At first this doesn't sound like a big deal or some big victory for liberty, but understand New Hampshire is the only state where you actually have a free choice if you want to wear a seatbelt or not. Now, seatbelts I think are a good idea. I mean, I practiced in a soft injury type of practice and know a lot about these kind of injuries. Seatbelts save lives, but it should be a personal choice. You shouldn't be forced to pay money if you don't want to wear one, and you also shouldn't be thrown in jail if you don't want to wear one. The way this works is the federal government bribes states to do what they want and then gives them a bunch of money. So things like uh, the drinking age or things like the seatbelt law. Why this is such a huge win for victory is just a handful of activists stood up and fought for personal responsibility and choice. And there were so many bureaucrats that wanted that quick money from the federal government, it just shows that a couple dedicated liberty activists can really get something done. Number eight is own a gun in DC. Through a huge plan, basically, he got a job working for the government carrying a gun and then fought the fact that he works for the government, carries a gun, and wasn't allowed to have one on his own. And they took a huge chance and a gamble and pressed it all the way up to the Supreme Court. It was a split decision, barely won, and it basically allowed firearms back into D.C. It was real ballsy, and it was a big win for liberty. Number seven is the marijuana movement. Number seven, the marijuana movement. Now, it's been around for a while, but nothing really ever happened. It sure did pick up steam about five years ago when places all over the country started decriminalizing marijuana. Now, there's also been a huge act of civil disobedience currently last year up in New Hampshire. You probably saw the films of that where people were just openly smoking it. This is a huge, huge difference compared to what the legislation's been in the last 30, 40 years. There's always been talk, but nothing ever got done. And even though they're watered down versions, the medical marijuana is a good start. Number six, win for victory, was the defeat of the real ID. Now, the federal government came up with this idea to make all IDs one standard ID. So, it would be much easier to track people and use this ID. It's a huge invasion of privacy. The things they were describing they wanted was uh, basically unaccountable, that this one guy got to make a decision if there would be DNA, RFID chips, um, barcodes so they can check you in and out wherever you go. It was just way too easy to gather information on the public. The public got very pissed off and reacted and this, even though the government of course never admitted defeat, basically the states, a couple brave states got together and told the federal government if you pass this we're not going to accept it. And the federal government came back and said okay well you're not going to be able to fly on planes, you're not going to be able to travel, and the states had enough balls to say, I don't care, we're not going to pass this thing and call the, the federal government's bluff. And supposedly it's never went away, but it's been tabled for the last couple of years.
Now they're trying to reintroduce it under a different name like the pass ID, but people are onto it and I think that's going to get shot down even quicker. I'm hoping. But that was a huge win. Way to go, activists. This episode at LCL Report brought to you by StashYourSwag.com. This amazing ebook will give you over a hundred ideas and secret hiding places.